baseboard party. I'm making my way this way. I just uh, did a little trick I learned from the pros. I came and got some help on these baseboards. These corners are very difficult because it's a radius, but a normal radius is bigger. These, it's like a bull nose. Um, one of the guys who does drywall just says, we call those baby bull nose. So um, for that reason, a lot of the tools wouldn't really work. So there was a lot of trial and error on the size of this piece. Um, the angles will be 22 and a half because this is coming to be a 90. There's gonna be this, this piece which has a cut, this piece has a cut, the same middle piece has a cut, and then this piece has a cut. So that, that 90 split four times is 22 and a half degrees. Now I figured that out, but what was pretty cool when I hired these guys was uh, they did a few little samples and then they figured out the size of um, this piece would match the radius, the, the bull nose, but it was, a, it was an abnormal size. So I struggled with that a little bit. And uh, the next thing I'm gonna show you is a pretty cool trick. So like, we ended up coming up with, this is the, this is the money size right here. And I had them come and do as much baseboard as they could in one day, that was our deal. But what I found is this baseboard is kind of thick. If you look right here, it's actually kind of thick, which is cool because, you know, my tile work was pretty tight. But in some spots, like uh, like here on the old tile, it was a little sloppy. So the wider baseboard helps cover up some details. So like they did this tile work with the old baseboards already installed. So they were only going right to the edge of the baseboard. So this wider baseboard helps cover that. Now there's some exceptions, like right here, I've got to fix that up. But, but basically everything else got covered well. So these are nice, except this is the problem. I'm gonna turn it upside down. Because this is a wider baseboard, it really comes off. There's a gap right here. It kind of stands off from the wall. So when I put this in, you can see there's just, there's gonna be a gap there. So what I was finding was, you know, I kept trying to make them thinner and goofing around. What these guys came up with that was pretty good was, look, the fact of the matter is with this very tight, smaller bull nose, you can't wrap it that tight. There's gonna be a gap here. And that's what, kind of what I was struggling with because if I stood it off a little bit, I could get the angles nice and tight. Um, so what they did that was cool was they would make it and then they would glue it. And I've seen guys glue it, but they actually used a little hot glue gun. And that, was, that way it was like instant. They'll glue this piece to this and then this to this. And then it's pretty much there. And if you look, it looks, you know, it's like, what the heck, there's a gap there. You're not gonna get it any better than that on this smaller radius. And then by the time I pull this in, that'll be just enough to caulk and fill. So we'll take a quick look around. Like, like I didn't do these, they did these. Also, this is on a 45. So this ended up being, um, this one was kind of weird. I think they came out at like about 12s, those angles. So they did that. And then look, they just, I'm gonna do the caulking. But they did that, I think, just because they're like, wanted to show that their work is good so that I don't see the gaps and freaks it freak out. But I understood pretty simply. It looks really good when it's done. So they came up with the fix that I was sort of struggling with. I'll find one more of those real outside um, corners because they really did turn out sweet. Like this one. or these over here. So once they're cocked up, they look really good. So that was a pretty cool trick. And then the next thing, and this house was so busted up, you know, because of a repipe that, you know, this really, it's <laughs> been a lot of work, so I, I needed some help on some things. But um, to save money, I'm gonna do as much as I can. So what I'd like to do is I'll find the stud. There's obviously going to be a stud in the corner. I'll position this right up here, kind of where you can't see the nail hole so much. And just pop one in. I'll find the next stud with the stud finder. All right, that one's got to be like a four by four in the corner or something. So let's go right here. 
I just kind of memorize where that's at. One in there. And then I go right about in the middle. And I will shoot one. The reason why there's a base plate 2x4 right here, that's standard framing for the wall. And then about every 16 inches there will be a stud. So the first time I did baseboards, you know, I'm just shooting nails everywhere. The nails won't hold in the drywall, but if you if you catch the stud, the nail will hold really good. And this way it has minimal nails. One in the corner, one on the base plate, one in the corner. I'll do another in the base plate and one right here in the corner. And that way the, the baseboard holds really good. And it also um, doesn't have all that many nail holes because I like to caulk the nail holes and get it all cleaned up. So let me show you what I'll do for that corner right there. All right, here we go. Small hole on the caulk gun. And I'm a little bit better with two hands, so. You know, it'd be totally perfect. You gotta be able to see it. And I started looking at the camera and goof that up. Definitely distracting. All right, so I'll close that up. And these ones get kind of ugly. Um, so I may just put some on my finger and do that manually. But by the time I do a quick wipe, right, and then I keep the little wet towel. I'll run the wet towel in there. Run the wet towel in there. You know, that corner turns out sweet. And then uh, in a little bit, you know, and I'll, I'll do a little bit of work in here. And then in a little bit, I'll show you how I like to paint these.